when working with young people, share examples from your own life, your own culture, your own community. And while recognizing as an educator that our personal identities and experiences shape how we view the world, and this has already been touched on today, so having that awareness of what we bring into the space. Um, I think we all, you know, it's a lifelong journey to have a lot of learning and unlearning and of that inner work to do. Um, and, and another big thing um, is to remember as educators that representation matters um, in our educators and, and leaders in the stories we share and uplift. It's important. It's so important for young people to see possibility models that look like them. And there's so many ways you can do this. You can bring in guest speakers. You can watch videos. You can go on field trips and present more than one way of thinking about things. We can decolonize our guidance and our perspectives, such as incorporating traditional ecological knowledge with young people in our garden. We've already talked about this, right? Um, thinking about moving from a usage mindset, what natural resources can we get from our garden to one of relationship? What can we learn seeing plants and everyone as teachers um, and companions? Uh, and I'll just end it there. I have, I, have, <laughs> I could say I could just smile all day. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And Marina, how about you? What is your takeaway that you want people to leave with today? Sure. Well, um, I had a hard time narrowing it down as well. The small picture takeaway that's like you can do today, tomorrow, any day is that um, being culturally inclusive can be done in small steps. You don't have to. We've talked about some really big concepts, but we've also talked about some things that are concrete that you can do. Um, so, you know, starting by engaging in conversation. We've talked about getting to know your students and their families as people. Um, centering people and asking kids what they want to grow, right? Like have fun with that. Um, and through steps like um, like the Garden Hero signs, so sh at that representation, I won't repeat that, but that's huge. And uh, what was my other note there? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think the other big piece is actually, um, more that like huge piece that's like bird's eye view is really that um, cultural inclusivity adds more voices and idea and knowledge to the table and our kids need it. They need it for their future. It's essential. Um, we need all of our young people to be brilliant and creative and open thinkers. So they're equipped to really address the global challenges they're gonna be facing and they we already are facing. And so, thinking about this as a necessity, no matter what the makeup of your school or garden community population is, um, embracing inclusivity is going to add resilience. And De La Cruz talked about that. Uh, it's essential. Here, here. That's great. De La Cruz, how about you? What's your, your key takeaway for folks you want to leave them with? Sure. I think that um, this is so beautiful. I would say, um, you know, I'm always reminded of a um, uh, social critic, uh, Neil Postman, who, um, who says, why is it that children enter school when they are little as question marks? They have so many questions, right? And then when they leave high school, they leave as a period. Why is it that they enter as a question mark and leave as a period? And I think that that to me metaphorically is at the heart of what our work should be about, right? It is to foster curiosity and questions and wonder. And, and I think that that curiosity about who you are as a person, what is your language about, right? What do you cook? I mean, on and on and the garden, you know, these earthworms, the squeal, the joy, and how are we related to that earthworm? How are we related you know, to that butterfly? This understanding that our kinship, you know, as Robin Kimura talks about in Braiding Sweetgrass, right? She mentions how this kinship is, is essential, that, that essence of who we are, human to human, but also our interconnectedness with 
the non-human world and soil can help us with that depth of understanding as we get connected in place, right? The locale matters. So I want to leave you with a thought and that is Wendell Berry who I've learned so much from. I even have a letter, a handwritten letter from him. He says, sowing the seed, my hand is one with the earth. Sowing the seed, my hand is one with the earth. So when we are planting, what we are really doing is that connection is so much deeper and then just putting that seed into the soil, right? It's so much more as we, again, are involved in more life. So I think with that, I, I just want to kind of acknowledge all of these wonderful, I've been reading some of the chats, but also the panelists and you and for your vision and for kids gardening, for really taking this up as a critical, important, you know, essence of what we ought to be doing in, in, our, in our work. Thank you for that.